Welcome to the Calling on You podcast. I'll be talking to a new person every day of the year, 365 day challenge of 2020. And I am looking to explore the topic of fear. I am releasing the callcast.co app so anybody can make a podcast. This is a power podcasting style where it's really more about creating raw audio, connecting with new people, and getting your content out onto iTunes. So if you want to learn more, go to callcast.co. So today I have Adelton Fitzgerald Holder the I. Uh, I'm extremely excited to speak with him today on this podcast. Just to set the stage for you really quickly, um, this podcast is my 2020 challenge goal to speak to one new person every single day of the year about the topic of fear and however that relates back to them. It's a personal journey for me um, to kind of step outside of my comfort zone um, and an opportunity to meet and talk to somebody new and kind of feel a little more exposed in the world, which is always a challenge for me. Um, and it's really mm-hmm. interesting for me to have uh, Adelson Fitzgerald will be the first as a guest on today uh, because, you know, I got a chance to quickly look at your webpage um, and mm. you are very uh, decorated with diplomas and deep learning um, and... Mm-hmm. You know, I can tell by watching uh, some of your YouTube videos, extremely smart. And so mm-hmm. for me, uh, I was always on the other side of the spectrum where uh, mm-hmm. school learning for me was always extremely challenging. Uh, when I got mm-hmm. called up in front of the class, people would laugh at me. Uh, so school for me was a place of fear. Uh, and learning became a, a place of fear uh, and very uncomfortable, you know, an uncomfortable place. Uh, mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got out of school and into the real world that all of a sudden the magic of learning started to take shape and um, things I think got more interesting for me when uh, you get to meet real people and see mm-hmm. how amazing the world can be outside of the classroom walls. So um, without further ado, I'd love to turn it over to you and kind of hear you know, what does fear mean to you in your life? Like how, I think it's such an important topic because every human will experience fear in some kind of capacity throughout their life and they will choose to deal with it or not deal with it. And either way has its effect on the course of your life. And I feel like for me, those who choose to really kind of face their fears and head on and learn from their fears and grow from their fears, Mm -hmm can live a much more expanded life than if they right. um, tried to stay sheltered from fear. So I'd love to turn it over to you and hear your thoughts on what fear means to you. Well, um, one of the problems you have is linguistics. You know, linguistics have many subfields. Phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, pragmatics. You know, phonetics and phonology deal with the production of sound, phonology deals with the tonality in language, um, uh, morphology deals with the breakdown of words, inflectional or morpho- morphological, syntax deals with context, semantics deals with meaning, pragmatics um, deals with the way in which language is used. This, so linguistics in, 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 this, in the English context encapsulates every facet, all the variables of language. Now, that set, we set in that foundation as to state that the models we use for language communication is very ineffective and inefficient when it comes to expressing abstract concepts, abstract and intangible concepts. You know, um, physical and tangible concepts like cup, plate, spoon, you know, ice, telephone, you know, it, 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 it lends itself more conveniently to tangible and um, physical concepts. Words like fear, they're abstract and intangible. And you can't just give a linear, straight answer to what fear is. And I think this is why the term is vaguely inexplicable. The most pervasively articulation of fear is false evidence appearing real. That's from a psychological perspective. But it doesn't really encapsulate this abstract concept because it's an intrinsic and an inherent human quality. 
And it's a kind of phenomenon. It's a, it's a conglomeration of, 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 of many different variables. And I always say to truly encapsulate an abstract or an in, intangible concept as a whole, we have to dissect it in its parts and by understanding what exactly uh, it is, is <laughs> or are, excuse me, its fundamental uh, qualities. When we look at fear, when you, I ask you if it's a paid gig, you say no, and I say, I say unfortunately, you cannot afford me. And then I said, psych, I shocked you, you know. Um, that's like the fear of unpredictability. Um, we'll exclude that unpredictable circumstances. We'll exclude that from the equation for now. So what exactly is fear? Well, we have to partition fear into two categories. We have instinctive fear and we have um, intuitive fear. Um, like I said, all this explanation is, again, is because of the ineffectiveness and inefficiency of language to express intangible, uh, immaterial concepts. So fear has two fundamental qualities. We have um, the instinctive fear, and we have the intuitive fear. Um, instinctive fear is, let's say we all, in a circle, engage in a dialogue, you know, share the rapport, interpersonal communication, and then uh, an asteroid or a giant rock just fall out of nowhere in the middle of the circle, right? There's an instinctive reaction. You know what I mean? Yeah, life, um, life and death situations. Right. Everyone instantaneously reacts in a particular way because this is the fear of instinctive fear, and this is, um, this is intrinsic in our nature. It's one of our biological predispositions. Um, preceding back to our uh, primordial era, um, 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 homo sapiens or whatever the term is, survival mechanism, was contingent on this sort of um, intrinsic evolutionary traits. You know, when we go hunting and we hear a rattle in the bush, survival mechanism. So that's intrinsic, that's um, instinctive fear. Instinctive fear is based on a survival mechanism. That's intrinsic in our nature. And then we have... Um, uh, intuitive fear. Intuitive fear is more like an inherent behavior, or a, a pre-established quality. You know, instinctive fear is in, intrinsic; it pre-exists in our nature. And, and so we have um, instinctive fear, and then we have intuitive fear. Intuitive fear is when you, let's say, I'm going to give you a very uh, superficial example. You see an attractive girl, and you want to approach her. Um, and you procrastinate. There's a fear. So you realize there's two kinds of fear that's occurring. One is conducive to a, a survival mechanism, and then we have this fear of uh, 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 unpredictable circumstances, the fear of the unknown. We might procrastinate. We might procrastinate. You know whether I should or should not um, um, approach this individual, and this is where the whole idea of uh, fear is false evidence appearing real. And that's a whole misconception. I think that's a very limited uh, scope because if someone says fear is false, evidence appearing real, you still don't really know what fear is, do you? Do we? Do, does anyone still know exactly what fear is? You know? So fear it's interesting. has two fundamental... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, li I'm listening. So fear has two fundamental qualities. This is, this is, this is a, uh, um, instinctive, and then we have... Um, Intuitive, not impulsive, because impulsive is an instant. Impulse is an instantaneous reaction, right? In, 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 uh, intuitive is a sort of a precognition, a sort of foreknowledge. Uh, um, in, 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 intuitive or intuition is predicated on a sort of instantaneous incl inclination to do, say, to 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 proactively um, take some sort of initiative. So fear is predicated on these two fundamental qualities. One is uh, instinct and intuitive. And intuitive is the most um, pervasive because you find intuitive fear more pre um, prevalent um, um, sociologically mm. you know, during inter inter interpersonal um, communication. Right. So, it, it's so amazing that... 
that uh, a lot of this fear, um, kind of as you're pointing out, <clears throat> is yeah. it goes back evolutionary so far into like the early development of kind of the, the brain as the brain is evolving over time, you know, th- over thousands and thousands of years. And we have this kind of early kind of brain uh, that's, I think it's closer to the uh, spinal cord, right? That kind of lizard brain that emerged that's kind of the fight or flight kind of brain, which takes hold and takes shape. But we still access that part of the brain in our modern day culture, even when it's we're faced with situations that have nothing to do with life or death. Um, and you're yeah. not going to be ostracized from society in any kind of way. If you ask a girl out on a date and she says no, you're not going to be cut off from society and, you know, laughed at and, and stigmatized in a certain kind of way that maybe yeah. if it was a small, small village, you could get ostracized in a, in a different kind of capacity for approaching the wrong woman or something. So, so there's very, like, yeah. um, you know, biological reasons why these fears might have uh, been uh, relevant at one point or another, evolutionary speaking. But in today's society, they don't they don't always match up. But yet we still they still um, they still affect us regardless if we're not mindful of them. They can still take so much power over us if we don't right. really become more and more mindful that you know what is it that I'm feeling right now and why is that and is it a rational reason why I'm feeling this way? Um, yeah. And yeah. in so much of today's world, we walk around kind of letting these deeper uh, emotions that we don't necessarily think about, but they still have so much control over our lives. Yeah. Yeah, I think the fact that, well, the fact that we've established that uh, there's two fun, you know, fear is polarized, the polarity, predicated on two fundamental qualities. The dualistic, you have the instinctive and you have the intuitive. I think you, we are, the, 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 the key central focus point of this podcast is probably centered around your idea of fear from an intuitive perspective. Now, we're going to look at fear. We're going to isolate one fear, focus primarily on intuitive fear. And we're going to look at um, the cognitive neuroscientific aspect of intuitive fear and the biological aspect of intuitive fear, where we'll um, focus primarily on the, the endocrine system. Now, when we experience fear, you know, this is from a, um, a biological perspective. There's a physiological, psychological, and emotional effect, right? When we experience fear, what happens is there's a tingling sensation. Tingling a needle, pins and needle. I think they call it um, um, formication. Um, uh, which is uh, insect, insect and spider-like crawling all over our body and um, parastasia, which is tingling, pins and needle. And what yeah. happens during when we experience that fear um, um, psychologically, there's a physiological reaction. Something in our stomach boils. Yeah. You know that. There's an yeah. there's a actual boiling. The... the, 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 the to articulate the experience, you have to use a metaphor. Something in our stomach boils, and we feel a sinking pain in our. Um, it's, it, it exists between our uh, pancreas and our adrenal, you know, part of the endocrine system. And there's an, a real, actual pain, right? And it elicits a kind of chemical where we feel a sort of unbearable emotional pain. That's quite psychological, this, this discomforting. So mm. there is a real physiological, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, and this is, this is ubiquitous. Yeah. And my, my body would get we... hot, too. My body would get flush with heat. I'd feel like the temperature rise throughout my entire body. Right. And we try, right, and we try our best. I mean, the, the feeling is discomforting. No, that's the biological. And look at the cognitive neuro, neuroscientific aspect. And we're going to get into too much technical stuff with uh, how the brain waves transition from the beta to alpha. Um, because if you're in the alpha state, the transmitter is the beta. This is where um, um, stress, anxiety, depression, and panic attacks, and all these, um, 
all these emotional uh, attributes uh, are eliciting. No, and to, add one, one, and to add really quickly, one other thing that would arise in me, just I don't know mm. if you can elaborate on it, is anger too. I'd start to feel extremely agitated but angry. Right. Um, now, from, from a cognitive neuroscientific perspective, the hallmark of it all is um, that fear we're really feeling is sort of it's an equilibrium. It's really an equilibrium we are feeling simultaneously. And that equilibrium is a balance between fear and excitement. And it's in mm. that space between fear and excitement where we experience two polarized phenomena. And one is procrastination and proaction. I could sit here and do nothing, or I could proactively take some sort of initiative and go past this fear. And what, why I say we experience fear and excitement simultaneously is because there's the fear and there's the excitement that comes with taking a proaction. And something truly, truly extraordinary happens when we proactively um, bum rush through that fear and dive into that excitement. And this wow. is where we experience a, a, a highest they call it the euphoria, the highest bliss the soul can experience. It's a sort of adrenaline rush. It's a kind wow. of adrenaline rush. It's a kind of adrenaline rush that is only, you know, uh, under no other circumstances, it's predicated on the foundation of this fear. So this fear and this excitement is this, this equilibrium, this balance between opposing forces yeah. and the proaction and that initiative we take in that space with all of these physiological, psychological, and emotional predicaments we're going through simultaneously, is what releases, that is what releases the adrenaline. Because the adrenaline actually kicks off the minute we start walking over to that person. Because it's yeah. unpredictable. You know what? I, I love that you said that, and that is so powerful. And what it oh. really makes me think about um, is how in America our culture is devoid of rituals uh, where we would have to kind of go through that experience um, and learn that thing where, you know, uh, in a lot of uh, kind of cultures, indigenous cultures in the past, they would have uh, um, rite of passage rituals where you would have to face your fear and go off and do some kind of rite of passage to go from a boy to a man or an adult. Um, where I think you're confronting yeah, that fear and releasing those those kind of toxins in a way that teach you in a different way. And I, at least that's where my mind went when you started talking about actually facing uh, facing your fear the, and I what think, that releases. I think the bigger philosophical problem is, you know, it's very easy to differentiate real actual knowledge from vagueness or vaguely inexplicable bullshit. Like, mm. I could tell you, you should be able to tell me if I'm, what I'm saying is bullshit, if what I'm saying is vague. And it's very easy to decipher um, uh, quality information from, um, from garbage or commercial nonsense. And that is, if, 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 I, if, if, I, if I discuss a, some, a subject with you and it doesn't resonate with you, then something is mm. wrong with the information itself. And not resonate in the sense that, Okay, I don't understand your words you use, and that's different. But you fully well encapsulate everything I'm saying, but it doesn't resonate. Then it's garbage I'm sharing with you. You know, um, and the problem we have is philosophically is we don't have enough people out there to articulate these things in such a way that it could resonate you. You want that kind of information that not only resonates with you. You want it to resonate with you in such a deep way where you could say, wow, this is exactly how I feel. This is exactly what I'm experiencing. But this person is articul articulating the information far more effectively for me. And mm. some, sometimes we don't know how to articulate what we're experiencing. And by, the, by so when it's false evidence of fear, and we all know it doesn't say anything about fear. You don't have anything to work with. Uh, so the, so, so the, 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 the conversation goes on indefinitely. So now I put the, all this stuff on the table to, you know, 
And you could just say, whoa, wow, I feel a heat. You see, because you begin to compliment the experience because it resonates with you. You, understand, you say, wait, this is exactly what I'm experiencing. You know, and we are, we are oblivious to these things. We don't realize that sometimes the, we procrastinate when we experience fear because there's a physiological, psychological, and there's emotional effect. The, our brain waves transition into this, the different states. Why, it's, why is there equilibrium between fear and, psych, and excitement? Why do we experience adrenaline rush? And once these things are articulated more effectively, whenever we are in the predicament and during the circumstances, we have a much deeper understanding so we can navigate the experience in a more interesting way. Because we no longer lost, we have a sense of direction. You see what I mean? Interesting. Well, normally I don't um, kind of go off in... in uh in this kind of direction, but since I had you on the phone, I wanted to take the opportunity to go more into the sciences because I know that was a field of your uh, learning and, and deep understanding. So I wanted to uh, to kind of uh, ha- open up space to, to, to go that direction. Um, and so I find yeah, it really right. fascinating to hear about it from, from kind of uh, as opposed to talking about it where, you know, people are sharing their experiences um, directly mm-hmm. related to fear, you know, something more from the the scientists. If you do yeah. want to share an experience, I mean, do you, do you have any recollection of your earliest encounter with fear from your life that you'd want to share? Uh, fear? Fear is, 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 a uh, um, fear, fear, fear. Fear is like a an underlying mechanism. It it does it doesn't and and here's the irony. The situational irony is this: without fear, how is the when when we go in a, a amusement park, there's an equilibrium. You ever go to the amusement park and you go uh, I don't know the term what they call those um when you go to the amusement park and the uh, yeah the roller what's coasters. The, what's the name of the the giant roller coaster? It's the same equilibrium, right? When they go down, it's fear. When they go up, it's excitement. Right. Simultaneously. So yeah. you're dealing with two emotional phenomena that's contingent on each other. You know, the rigid distinction, but like, like, uh, like, like electricity and magnet, like electricity. You know, you have, you have a positive and negative charge. You know, if, if I personify positive and, uh, and negative charge um, or anthropomorphize it, Positive and negative charge, they will never speak to each other. They will never meet, never, ever have any communication in their entire life. Yet these two opposing individuals are really contingent on each other for light to be wholesome. The same with uh, magnetism, force, force and repulsion. So, I mean, we're looking at fear, but the adrenaline we desire is through the fear. When you, when you, when you skydive, there's a fear, but then there's the adrenaline. So they're really the same fear. They're really the same. They're really the same phenomena that occur. But what happened is we assign different labels um, just a duration. There's a time when something occurs. And, and, and once, when you transition into that stage, at one particular stage, we give it a name. And at another particular stage, we give it another name. It's fear, but it's an adrenaline rush. Right? But it's right. a process, right? It's just different labels for different states, right? During a particular type of process. And so they're contingent on each other. Without, no, without fear, where would you get the adren- adrenaline? There's no adrenaline rush. That's why some guys are drug dealer because they get high, you know, from the whole idea of selling illicit drugs, you know. The, so so, so it, they, they, they're... they're, they're they contingent on each other. You can't have one without the other. You can't have adrenaline without fear. Well, well let, let me ask yeah. you, though. Like, remove, remove the intellectual states of talking about fear and like that and talk about it from a personal, personal experience in your life without, mm. without being so prefrontal cortex. You know, what, what, is, what is fear in your life like if you were to go back to when you were a child or when you were an early boy? Mm. Did you ever feel it before you could, you know, put all this language around it? You know, that time when you well, talked about that, that pit in your stomach that, 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 that hit you where your body heated up or 
you started to feel yeah. those emotions. Was there ever a time when that took over your body and you could relate to that feeling also? Yeah, it did, but I didn't have the I didn't have the I didn't have the intellectual capacity to articulate what I'm experiencing. So now I'm fearless. No, I'm completely fearless. You know, I just I I I, I fear nothing. And the reason why people experience fear is because no one is really sitting down and explaining what fear truly is to them. And I'm not even going into fear in a very scientific way. I'm, you know, I'm trying, I'm just, we really looking at fear from a psychological and a sociological perspective. We just touch on the brain with what happens with brain waves, and we just touch on the, the, the physiological and psychological reaction that everyone, every human being invariably across the board experiences this. Um, but it's a feeling we experience all the time. I mean, see a, a beautiful girl and I may want to approach her. I may want to apply for a job. There might be a level of procrastination, but then the knowledge would kick in. It would kick in and I would understand what exactly it is and it helps you navigate uh, life a lot better. So, um, so yeah, I'm kind of fearless. I'm not a person who really, really, really experiences fear. The only fear I deal with is... Um, um, Instinctive fear, um, 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 survival mechanism. Should I go there? You know, why am I feeling nervous? You know, I shouldn't. And there's, a, there's this kind of instinct that tells you, what is it? Why I just don't feel like doing this? Why I don't feel like going to this place? That's a different kind. It's a kind of like a survival mechanism. And then all of a sudden you decide not to go. And then all of a sudden a fight breaks out or there's a shootout. You know, that's like your, you know, again, that's where... No, you have like a hybrid between instinct and intuition, where your intuition kicks in, right, to protect you, right? It's telling you it, your, your, your instinct something. Right. right. Well, let me ask you this in closing then. If you were to give advice to one person out there who does end up feeling fear over these things, um, mm. even if they're kind of small or whatever, what kind of advice would you give to that person? Study it. Study it. Study. When we experience something, you see education, and I remember you said initially in the conversation, you don't have education. and um, There's different kind of knowledge, you know. Education falls under the umbrella of knowledge. But there's also intelligence. Obviously, you have intelligence. Um, intelligence is really the capacity. Um, it's based on spatial reason. It's the capacity to think. You see, you see um, intelligence... Uh, exhibited on a um, 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 IQ test. IQ test is um, drawing conclusions about three-dimensional objects based on limited information. Education is more based on um, um, the acquisition of, um, of, 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 of information. And you see that on um, TV show like, educational TV show like Jeopardy. So you may not have education, but there, you have, there's intelligence, there's knowledge, and there's wisdom, there's cognizance, there's, well, there's all different kinds of... Uh, knowledge education is just one aspect of it so to everyone listening to all viewers if you ever experience fear you're experiencing fear because mentally you're in an unknown space and the best advice i can give you is to try to study to learn knowledge is power try to understand what it is and by under you know to to by understanding what something is right um it gives us power over it you know you know the human beings human beings fear what we, we fear what we do not understand what we do not understand we cannot control it's that simple and the best advice i could give a person is when we experience something take some sort of initiative to understand it as understand as much about it as possible and by gaining knowledge and understanding a deeper understanding of it right it gives us a little more control it gives us power and control over it as long as we don't understand what we we are experiencing it's impossible to maneuver it we maneuver it um based on we just we have to understand stuff you see what i mean yeah so my that best beautiful. advice to my yeah, I was going to say that was that was beautifully said and really, um, really fascinating. Adelson Fitzgerald, Holder the First, like honestly, oh, it's an honor. 
Oh, go ahead. My, my apologies. Sure. My one more thing I'd like one more thing I'd like to say before before I end. Or if you don't decide not to learn it, place yourself continuously. Take a take a, a practical approach. Again, again, not there's a different kind of knowledge. Again, call it practical knowledge. Continuously put you hours put hours put yourself in the predicament to experience the fear more and more and more. And by taking this practical approach and placing ourselves into the precipice, they say, you know, deep within the precipice of darkness is where we find the light. And by putting ourselves in the, the situation more and more and more and more and more, we begin to develop a practical understanding of it. And practicality is a sort of empirical knowledge that's invaluable because you have a practical understanding. And that supersedes all education and all intelligence because you actually experience something. So you, you, uh, you, have a, you have a deeper understanding, uh, understanding of it with a kind of absolute certainty. And that supersedes it all. I'm done. Amazing. Well, truly brilliant. Uh, Adelson Fitzgerald Holder the first. thank you so much. It's an honor to uh, get a chance to talk to you. And yes, uh, I really appreciate your perspective and sharing, um, sharing your knowledge with us. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And I thank get a chance so to much, talk Andy. to you again. And thank you for having me on the show. It's truly an appreciation that defies description. Thank you again. All right. Take care. Bye now. You too. Bye-bye.